so powerful that we can come together and show love for our beautiful friend, fellow poet, who has hosted for years, right here on this stage of the New York Poets Cafe. And, you know, he shared with us, you know, his struggle with lupus. And um, I said, you know what, Nathan? You know you got a lot of love. So we're gonna get all our friends together. All those poets that you love are gonna come out and show you some. Because you are our friend and you have continuously shown us love all these years. So we thank you. I met Nathan P. in the late 90s in Brooklyn while I was exploring some of the poetry venues and open mic cafes like the Brooklyn Moon, the Tea Party, Demu Cafe, and I had a spoken word series called Word Space at Sada Art Gallery, and um, Nathan would come through and we had a chance to talk and we became really good friends. And he is a fantastic poet and just all around beautiful spirit. And he went on from the open mic to become the host of the Friday night and Wednesday night slam at the New York and Poets Cafe. So he was very busy. Um, he was a great host. And during that time, you know, in the early years, um, he had different issues with his health. And then we came to find out that he had lupus. And so that changed some things for him in terms of the frequency um, of his involvement. And, you know, being a friend of his, I had an inside look at it in terms of how it really affected him in terms of his breathing and just overall quality of life. But he never complained. He never complained about anything. And he continued to host, um, not only at the New York Post Cafe, but also at the Inspire Word series, which um, was a, a project, which is a project um, from Michael Geffner. So he did that. And there came a point, you know, more recently where he just stopped doing all of the hosting and the performing because it was taking a toll on his health and he needed to focus on himself. So, you know, we had time to have conversations about this. And since I've known him all, these years, because we go back to the late 90s and now it's 2015, we're about to enter into 2016, we had all these years of friendship. So I guess you could say I had an intimate look at his struggles. I really understood. And I listened to some of the things he didn't say, you know, like um, him wanting to take a step back from hosting. He loves doing that. He loves being out. He loves sharing his poetry and, and helping other poets to um, hone their skills. So it was, it was a difficult transition for him, but one he had to make. So what I heard was what I'm saying to you in terms of he had to slow down in order to look after his own health. But what I also heard was, what can we do for Nathan? That, okay, maybe he can't make it out to all of the events, but with all of the people, all the lives that he touched, all of the poets that he has been a part of their experience. I said, well, we can give something back. I called up all of our friends, our fellow poets and family members and said, you know what? Let's do something for Nathan. Let's have an event where he is our guest of honor and we will share with him. We will bring the poetry to him. We will bring the love to him. I'm happy. We're so glad to be here to help celebrate a fabulous individual, the one, the only, the legendary Nathan B.
shirt. Can I get more volume on the mic? It's called Up South, yeah? She says, write a poem about being a poet from New York. I'm thinking, oh, that'd be hard. <laughs> See, to begin with, I've lived here since 79, but I'm not from New York. I'm from Richmond, VA, the capital of the Confederacy. Like Tubman, I followed the North Star like a runaway slave searching for freedom, looking for the revolution. I'm trying to get away from picket lines, strange fruit, burning crosses and clan signs, only to find Ku Klux Miller cops hiding behind badges instead of sheets. And don't get me wrong, I love New York. In the 60s, during my college days, all of my boys been from the Big Apple. I hung out with them because they were the coolest, but they all gone now. So I pour a sip for Lou Wheeler and Leslie Scott. I take my little money from a summer job at Menacing to buy Italian knits, sharp skin pants, and Playboy shoes with the thick rubber soles from a Greedian driver. I wouldn't tell anyone where I was really from. All the flies girls love the brothers from New York, and I wanted to be cool like that. My boys introduced me to black power, black Muslims, black nationalists, black Panthers, and black poetry. Imam Muhammadi Barak, as he was called then, Hakeem Adabuchi, a.k.a. Don L. Lee, Carolyn Rogers, Asiya Muhammad Torre, and the last poets. Of course, with the exception of some of the last poets, none of them were from New York anyway. <laughs> but it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to be like them. I'd never heard talk like that before, and I was hooked. And porridge was my drug of choice. Malcolm's murder triggered the Black Arts Movement. The seed was planted, watered, and nurtured in all the porridge spots. The Spirit House in Newark, the East and the Uru Sasha Shule in Brooklyn, the African Poetry Theater in Queens, the National Black Theater in East Wind, and Kimako's in Harlem. But then, you wanted to know more about the poetry. The thing is, I never call myself a poet. Creole or jelly might be a better description, since I rock anything with a string, plus I can sing. Some call me Dr. Rockefeller, the godfather of spoken word. You better ask somebody if you haven't heard. Actually, because I write a lot too, you might just say I'm a pissed off brother with a pen. One of my friends reminded me that America is like a melting pot, where tomorrow always feels like yesterday. It's a melting pot where the first immigrants traded beads and bottles for land. But these twisted out want to be commercial flip floppers pretending to be hip hoppers. And these Ku Klux Killer cops think niggas come in all colors. So I still do protests, picket lines, and die ins. Because in this atmosphere, I can't breathe. And New York just seems like up south to me.
know, like near the end of the year, beginning of the year around New Year's, which I call it a cashless man, like kind of period, I, I write a new poem. And the poem always has to like uh, talk about what was going on and what, what should be happening. It uh, takes out the old year, brings out the new year. So my poem for this year is called uh, Uncomfortable Conversations. Thanks for listening, yo. My name is Angoma. You've been listening to Angoma. It's not your average string thing. 
And those two pieces are my newest CD, uh, Lessons from the Book of Osayemi, Chapter 2. And uh, if y'all like that, y'all need to come see me because like, it's got about 13 more dope pieces. You know what I'm saying? Peace, y'all. Thanks for listening. That's for you, Nathan. That's for you. Nathan P. <sighs> okay. The name of this poem is called, I wrote this for Nathan, actually. The name of this poem is called, I Ain't No Elegy. Some poems stand on rooftops wondering if it should jump or dance itself alive. This poem is holding a compass trying to find words that capture the lapel of a man. A Rubik's Cube moonwalking over the colors, fastened to pulse, hardwired to Sunday morning calm. Like a smoke signal sent from the eye of a hurricane, we find it hard to believe messages shaped by storms. We break in an outcry of lungs, he's a wreckage of cool. Holds his cane, minus a half step or hard bottom missed beat. The weight of imagination doesn't allow me to turn away while thinking of how fiction he is. The courage it takes to be a hammer while resembling a handkerchief. We walk in the footsteps that feel like oceans of calm water or hard liquor set aflame. We speak of him with our hands and ears fixed to prints, trying to rewind a tape from an old boombox. Someone once told me that he was born in a factory that makes lavender stones, a bright yellow flower in the wild. When a grand piano finds a song nailed to its torso, it sings like its jaws is holding a note. Some poems stand on rooftops wondering if it should jump or dance itself alive. This one grabbed me by the throat and said, you better not cry while reading this, because I ain't no elegy. The one, the only, fire! Fire! Just like a snake. My body shiver, then it shake. And trance by rhythms I can't take. When heartbeats and breakbeats rhyme, I align, giving rise to the lines that predict my demise. I'm hypnotized. Disguising who I are and be, intoxicated. I rock inflated hips and move my lips to songs that clip my wings. I sing and dance to every any damn thing, as long as beats are hot. Now I've got Kelly's keys in my ignition. Nas is brave hearts riding train. I'm swapping spit for show with sisters, and when I'm giving brain care, no one hear me. Cause I'm lost on that ride, wondering, which came first, the chicken head or the chicken head hawk? Who gawks and stares and glares at ass too young to touch, yet too much to ignore? Her ass is not for sale, despite the goods that she displays. This is just her way of getting attention. See, Daddy never mentioned how a queen should be treated, so your highness retreated to minus the treatment she really deserved. This led to games, tricks, and hard lessons learned, cause you teach by example, but Daddy only let her sample his DNA. See, he ran away. So now she's looking, watching all cats clocking, clocking bare naked ladies, and she wants eyes too, so now she barely dresses, flashing thighs and fake tresses. What she needs is life's lessons. What she needs is God's blessing. What she needs to be seen remains hidden. Cause daring to be all that she is is forbidden. Cause it's a man's world. But like James said, it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. When I told Nathan what I was doing, cause I didn't want it to be a surprise. I wanted him to be aware of what I was doing, um, what I was sharing, information about him, his life, um, his journey you know, with lupus and with poetry. So he was really excited. And um, he helped me with the lineup in terms of um, asking poets to come through. And um, we had a Facebook event page where it was very active and people were communicating. So he was really looking forward to that day and seeing everybody all at one time together. And it meant a lot to him. 
it meant a lot to him um, because he didn't ask for anything. He didn't ask for us to put together an event in his honor. Like I said, Nathan never complained about his health. He still doesn't complain about his health. But I know that, you know, health care costs money, um, medicine costs money, and I wanted to help him with these things. Not only myself, but other artists and friends as well. So we took the proceeds from the New York Post Cafe from that event and gave it to Nathan to help offset some of his medical costs and things that he might need. So, um, you know, that's what we do. It's not a hard thing. As a community of poets and artists, it's a natural thing. It's giving back. It's taking care of our own. You ever met somebody that you are 110% positive has never raised their voice in their entire life? <laughs> <laughs> is it just me? If you, did, you have, I'm about to introduce her, OK? She used to pro, um, co-produce verses with K.O. Back in the day, and she would come faithfully the last Saturday of every month from Connecticut. Rain, cold, snow, blizzard, she was here. It wouldn't have been me. But rain, cold, snow, blizzard, she was here. And she's a fantastic artist. Please clap it up for the one, the only, the nicest woman you ever want to be. Thank you, Nathan, for all that you are and all that you're becoming. And Queen Sheba told me to say thank you for making room for a little girl in the South to have a stage and a platform. She sent me a message and told me to tell you. <laughs> so this poem is for Maya Angelou. Y'all ready? You are a completed poem that we must read to somebody. You are prayer, light, Words after years of silence, dreams manifested, deja vu, you are sonnets, haikus, villanelles, free verse. You are everything that needs to be said when leaders leave us, tragic and bloody. You are a healing, reflection reminding us of ourselves, little girl poets with voices, with songs, dramatic presentation. You are love unrequited, love in abundance. God is love, is giving, you are a gift, forgiveness. 3 a.m. Can't sleep with these words in my head, my heart, my skin. Got to release these words. Got to give them to the universe, to the people, to the earth. You are freedom, taking power back. Not being victimized as long as we tell the story or the fear that words kill and the proof that words save. Abandoned and defended, daughter, sister, lover, friend, artist, mother, Ancestor, mother of words, spine of the book and the body, pages of connectivity to us, to God, to truth, to love, strong and vulnerable, nurturer of imagination, motivator of creativity. Mrs. Flowers was right, you know, how she said you won't fall in love with poetry until it passes through your lips. Your poems, they pass through my lips, all phenomenal, full and rising, beyond sky and clouds, beyond stars and night, beyond us. You rise and you show up, sometimes as a rainbow in our clouds. A vibrant reminder that we can illuminate even the darkest of places. Brown girls, we illuminate dark places with poems, song, and passion. My Angelo, this is how you made me feel. This is what generations to come will learn. This is what we will all remember. Your legacy will continue to rise, to rise, to rise. Earth angel, you took flight. It is our turn to love you with liberation. That was your lesson. It will take courage. You will always be honored, read, memorized. You will seep into our bones, undertone our poems. Sometimes you will rhyme, you will sing, but mostly you will be your legacy. You will be present in your legacy. We will dream and remember everything that you gave us. We will be thankful for everything that you gave us. God matched your wife will smile when you returned home. There were serenades of a job well done. There was your mother, Amiri, Langston, Malcolm, and Martin waiting to welcome you home. A celebration, a throne. There was love there as there is love here. 
You have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Your words are still spoken into God's ears. This is part poem, all prayer. Amen. Amen.